It's Ingsoc. They have removed the language and, and, and debased it down to such a level that you can't even have a communication with the average person. That's right. But the problem, I, I would go so far as to say, in some important respects, democracy e exists least of all in America because what passes for democracy is simply for sale to the highest bidders. It does include the Zionist lobby in, in, in association with the uh, Christian fundamentals. It does include the banks, the drugs, the military uh, industrial complex. We, we know them all. I mean, it seems to me that it really doesn't matter who the hell is in the White House, who the hell is in Number 10 Downing Street in London. They are, to a very large extent, puppets of a very tiny minority of vested interests. And that's why getting the truth out to mobilize citizens to make their democracy work is so important. Well, you're right. I mean, there's really five big lobbies, and they're all interconnected, literally intermarried. Uh, and they all want the same thing. They want to keep the war on drugs going because they're shipping in the illegal drugs. They want to push their deadly uh, pharmaceuticals on us and have forced inoculations. They want uh, you know, more tyranny. Uh, the Defense Department and the private contractors are now taking over the police departments, the red light cameras, the surveillance, the iPhones, the computers. They are privatizing the police state and then literally absorbing the once free society. But I want to expand on things that you brought up here because I've studied 9-11 in depth. I said they were going to attack the World Trade Centers two months before it happened. I could see the preconditioning uh, in the media that was taking place. And your research in the Middle East, you know, of how the Mossad and the Shin Bet have infiltrated all these groups, that's on record. But it's more than that. We know, uh, according to Colonel Butler, the head of the Defense Language School and the AP and Newsweek and other publications, they, they hide this in plain view that many of the hijackers were trained at U.S. bases, and we know they were taking part in drills, infiltration drills, and believed they were government agents. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, and we know Israelis were paying for their houses, uh, were paying for their apartments, were giving them money. I mean, this has come out even on Fox News. So, but but that goes further uh than, than, than the Israelis just piggybacking on a Muslim operation. Uh, and, and all I want is the truth. How do you have these guys trained at U.S. bases? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, one of the fascinating things about the whole unfolding drama is the film of what I call The Five Dancing Israelis. Of course, you're aware of that film. Yes. You, you see, I mean, you pull out and you see one of the planes going into the building and you see these five guys virtually dancing all on mobile phones. Now, you know, and I'm sure most of your listeners know, that they were originally reported as being just foreigners, maybe presumed Muslims, and the FBI gave chase, didn't they? And they tried to avoid arrest, but they were eventually caught, and surprise, surprise, they all turned out to be Mossad agents. Now, I think it's not unreasonable to speculate that on their telephones, they may actually have been calling in the planes to the buildings. Yeah? Calling them in. Well, if they were GPS, it would already be a pre-planned coordinate. Um, well, that could be. But if they weren't, they may have had some kind of transponder in which they were calling them into the targets. But, I mean, the point is, the guys were there, and they knew in advance it was going to happen. Well, I've talked to the sheriff, uh, because they ran to New Jersey, and I've talked to the sheriff on air who arrested them. I mean, it's not... I mean, that went on. My only issue is, look, it's like a five-headed hydra. And so I'm not saying one head of the hydra isn't guilty. I'm just pointing out, like you did with the USS Liberty, and I did that in, in, in one of my films, Terror Storm, because I interviewed the admirals who were involved and the judge advocate generals. I mean, I've interviewed them all. Most of them are dead now. Admiral Moore, you name it. I've interviewed Admiral Geist and other admirals who were on the phone when McNamara said, no, the president says you can't defend the ship. And then they say, we don't care. We're still going to defend the ship. And then the president comes on and says, I want that GD ship going to the bottom. And he had taken control of the ship under national security previously and parked it there. So my only issue is... Israel was guilty of premeditatedly doing it, 100 percent, but this, this, this program is so big, the White House was coordinating the operation. So, I mean, this, this goes way back. Yeah, I mean, I've got a whole chapter in my latest three-volume book, which is titled Zionism, the Real Enemy of the Jews. I, I've, I've got a separate chapter on the whole liberty affair, 
But I bring it to an end by saying that what the Liberty Affair shows us is that there is nothing Zionism won't do to its friends as well as its enemies to get its own way. Well, I mean, Israel admits that they would they bomb Jews out of Iraq and out of Spain. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the 40s and 50s to make them go to Israel. But, but Alex, uh, can I just say why I think we, we both are passionate for the truth. But can I just explain very shortly why the truth has to be handled with care? Because if it's not, it could provoke anti-Semitism. Now, I, I deal with this by saying there is one key to understanding, and all of my Jewish friends who are anti-Zionists agree with me, there is one key to understanding, and it's the difference between Judaism and Zionism. Judaism is the religion of Jews, not the Jews, because not all Jews are religious. Like Islam, like Christianity, it has at its core a set of moral values and ethical principles. Zionism, as Jewish nationalism, is a colonial enterprise which founded a state for some Jews, mainly by Zionist terrorism and ethnic cleansing. Now the point is this, that means that Judaism and Zionism actually are two opposites. Zionism conflates them so that it can accuse people like you and me who are critical of Israel of being anti-Semitic. But I, I'm nearly finished on this explanation. When you know the difference between Judaism and Zionism, you can understand, A, why it is perfectly possible to be passionately anti-Zionist, meaning anti the colonial enterprise, without being in any way, shape or form anti-Semitic, anti-Jew. More importantly, you can understand why it's wrong to blame all Jews everywhere for the crimes of the few in Israel. Sure, but I just want to be specific on this whole subject. To me, uh, I don't even approach it from you know, psychologically from an issue of, of, of Jews or Germans or Chinese. The Chinese government uh, does horrible atrocities and takes political dissidents organs. What does that have to do with Chinese people? Or there's an Italian mafia. What does that have to do with it with with Italians or John Wayne Gacy, the serial killer, was a was a was a wasp or a white guy. I mean, that what does that have to do with white people? I mean, every major government I've studied, the, 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 I mean, the Russians have been caught countless times staging terror attacks. The czars did it. The communists did it. I mean, this is just I believe what the founding fathers did. Any big government tends towards corruption, like you said about the Arab states, highly corrupt. Uh, you know, the Saudi Arabians are constantly doing just unspeakably bad things. And so, you know, to me, the media, like you said, wants to make it about anti-Semitism. And we've caught the feds running all these white supremacist groups to go out and be virulently anti-Semitic to then poison the water from a real debate. But Alex, let me, let me put it this way. I think the real division on Earth, the real division is not actually between rich and poor. I think the real division is between governments and the vested interests uh, which sort of run them and the citizens of nations. Yes, absolutely. That, that to me is the real division and that's where the real struggle is. And the, the reason why truth is so important is because it's only by truth that the citizens of nations can be empowered to make their democracy work by calling their representatives and even their presidents and prime ministers to account, right? Yes, sir. Alan Hart, in the time we've got with you, though, and I want to have you back up soon about your amazing research and all the incredibly famous people you've interviewed, uh, because, uh, I mean, I love history and I want to get it from your perspective and also talk more about your three-volume uh, book that's out, the third volume coming out soon. Uh, AlanHart.net, is that the best website to give out? Um, yeah, but there's also my American uh, publisher, um, uh, www.claritypress.com. ClarityPress.com, and we'll talk about the title of the book and more before you leave us, and I'm going to keep you a little bit in the next hour with Bob Chapman because uh, this time is just exploding past us. But I want to digress now. Regardless of... The players involved in 9-11, and, and we know U.S., British, and Israeli it, intelligence are all merged at the hip, so all three groups know what really happened. And there was a stand-down of our air defense. Cheney was in control of it. There were Israeli spies all over the place. That's admitted. Uh, this stinks to high heaven. We, we know they blew the towers up. So let's go back to that, because I just want to have the national debate about 
you know, what is the true story of 9-11? Uh, because none of us are safe if that doesn't come out. Now, uh, and we know governments have been caught staging events in the past to get us into wars. So, so, and we know about Operation Northwood. So let's go back to the thought processes. You know, you're a big independent journalist, author, top BBC you know, in the previously. 9-11 happens. What spurred you to talk to these colleagues, these top engineers? What was the process? What were the discussions like when they came to you? More details of, uh, you know, th of this info and... Then you're self-censoring, uh, because we know a lot of other people did that. Go ahead. Well, I, I may tell you, when I first took the matter up with the, uh, my world-leading uh, technical consultants, I, I must tell you that their very first response was to say to me, Alan, it's possible that the planes did bring down the building, because although the, the burning fuel was not enough of itself to create the heat to melt the steel,